Good evening, welcome back to my garage. Today is probably gonna be um, probably quite a controversial video, I think. The reason I say it's controversial is because maybe five, 10 years ago, this was a very hot subject, and it's still quite a hot subject for quite probably quite a few of you watching, and that is bikes and bike gear being made in China. China. Now I'm on. I'm very much on the fence with this. I think there's obviously a lot of products that are have been made in China for decades. I'm pretty sure my Garmin's probably made in China. My phone's probably made in China. This microphone's probably made in China. But it's good quality stuff and it works, so I don't really care. Like it or not, if that product was made in the UK, in Europe, in America, or anywhere like that, you're probably gonna add another 50 to 100 pounds or dollars onto the price. Joe, I'm looking directly at you for this because you love a good AliExpress job. But when it is products from places like Timu, which is a new AliExpress, AliExpress, or anywhere like that where you just pay six or seven quid and you get something that in theory is worth 90 to 100 pound, yeah, bit different. I mentioned Joe because he's put a AliExpress headlight guard on his Africa Twin. In fairness to him, it's just a bit of plastic. So it doesn't need to be 150 quid from Honda or from Tora Tech or somewhere like that. So I get that. Anything that your life depends on or you depend on in any way, shape or form, I probably wouldn't ever buy it from a cheap copy website. Let's put it that way. Anyway, why am I talking about all of this nonsense? Probably about a month and a half ago, Mad for Bikes, sent me a little message on Instagram saying, we've got these new bags that have come in and we don't know whether to stock them. I'm gonna be very careful how I say this, but they're essentially very similar to products that are on the market in the UK and America, like the same. They basically said to me, can I test it? Don't need to do any content around it. They just wanna know what I think about it. But I'm gonna do a video on it anyway because I need the content. <laughs> Regardless of me making content or not, it's worth you guys knowing. I know a lot of you watching, myself included, cannot stomach paying 13, 14, 1500 quid for panniers from Lone Rider, for example. So enough rambling, Sam. What did Mad for Bike send you? This thing. If I cover that up, what bag does that look like? That one. <laughs> this is a soft luggage bag from a company called Rhino Walk. Their slogan is focus on riding bags. So you know they're gonna focus on riding bags, right? I can't lie to you, it's essentially this. I mean, it's almost identical. This is my US 10 liter bag from Krieger. I've had it for a couple of years now, but even to the point where it's got this mesh thing on the back and this has this mesh thing on the back. This is waterproof, this is waterproof. This is a roll bag, this is a roll bag. This has got a zip, on, zip pocket on the front, this has got a zip pocket on the front. Do you remember the top gear? episode years ago where they were talking about Chinese cars and they were like that looks exactly like a Range Rover and the Chinese government just went no it doesn't <laughs> get it before Krieger managed to get a lawsuit across but I don't think they will but even the mounting systems the same so you get these things which literally look the same they slot into the little material rings that you mount to the frame of your bike and then if I pick up the uh, Krieger one they look relatively familiar don't they which also slot into material rings on your bike. If that didn't say Rhino Walk, it would just say Krieger, right? The main difference being, full price, if you're looking at this US 10 from Krieger, it's 99 pounds. If I now go on the Mad for Bikes website, Rhino Walk 10 litre motorcycle tail bag, 34.99. So it's basically a third of the price. And then that price difference goes up even more when you go for the bigger bags. The 20 litre bags, only 39.99. The full hangover tail bags, these ones, are only 135 quid. And also you get Mad for Bikes discount if you use my code, so even cheaper. I've used the Krieger bag for a number of years now, less so much recently because I've sort of merged over to my Lone Rider stuff. I've used the Rhino Walk bag now for a couple of weeks probably in this crap sort of rainy weather we're getting in January, but I've left it strapped to the back of the KTM when I'm going into work. It's been fine. There's not been a lot of stuff in there, but it's not come off. None of the straps have broken. None of the stuff that I had inside was wet, like, and we had some really rancid rain. So I'm gonna give it a test. I did message Mad for Bikes before filming this video to basically say, are you guys all right if I just destroy this thing? And they haven't replied yet. So 
if they reply in a bit saying, no, we want it back, I might have to pay for it. <laughs> I'm gonna side by side this Krieger US 10 with the Rhino Walk 10 litre. This is my Krieger bag. I personally paid for this a few years back. I'm actually sacrificing something I own for the greater good. So um, you all better do all the like and subscribe -y stuff because this is actually gonna cost ruin something I own. While I'm here, just before I go, uh, Mad for Bikes did send me this as well. This is a leg bag. I don't use leg bags. I told Mad for Bikes I don't use leg bags. I turned down the one from Road Skin as well because I'm never gonna use it. It's probably way better for women that don't have pockets in their gear, which is ridiculous. I don't know why manufacturers don't really put a lot of pockets in gear nowadays. And it's also probably way better for people that ride sports bikes because we all know that they put zero pockets in a, a one piece race leathers. So this is probably quite useful to you. It looks nice. Got a nice little logo thing, but you can pull that off. The fit is fine. It's nice and padded. There's loads and loads of pockets on it. It's quite nice. I think this is waterproof as well. It's probably like 20 quid knowing Rhino Walk. I just personally don't see a point in a leg bag when I've got other luggage on my bike. I don't want something strapped to me. Mark from Leeds, looking at you, mate. <laughs> let's get on the bike. Let's get the, I'm gonna take the monkey out because it's funnier. Let's destroy it. Or let's try and destroy it, see what happens. There's a GS rider down there on a, in a polite vest. Oh no, sorry, it's a horse rider. <laughs> Hello everyone, monkey. Because this is the funniest thing ever to ride on a green lane. This is my new um, SW Motec tank bag. Review coming on that as well. I dropped my bloody Gerbin glove in the mud. As I mentioned, you can kind of guess where this is going because I've got a camera right there facing the rear wheel. And then if I turn this way... <laughs> Mike Rieger and the Rhino Walk bag tethered to the back of the monkey and down there there is a lot of puddleage quite a lot of ice as well thick AF ice why do you guys watch these videos? <laughs> they're both tied on with the best coloured string I could find there's not a lot of weight in them but the Rhino Walk one does actually have more weight in it than the Krieger one. You're not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. What I thought is I'd put them on here so it'll actually test the strength. Because if this gets pulled, in theory, it could undo the clips. And obviously you don't want that when it's on your bike. You watch this, will catch a stone or something. Yank me backwards. <laughs> Once again, I'm in my road skin gear, which is not waterproof. <laughs> this suspension that I put is so much better. That is just ice there. <laughs> that is just solid ice. <laughs> what am I doing with my life? <laughs> this is absolutely hilarious. <laughs> God, that's deep! Sorry, monkey. I'm sorry, monkey. Let's even them out quickly. Should we flip them over? Oh no, they're already flipped over. Oh, see? Oh, Krieger bags come undone. Let's do that back up. So has the Rhino Walk. Let's, they've both come undone, so... They may be wet inside because of that. Oh, I've just put mud on my face, you moron, Sam. The monkey smells very burny. <laughs> my bum is wet. Oh, road skin, sorry. Look at my jeans. This is what YouTube actually is, people. Dicking around on a green lane and running up and down, trying to get a camera. Pretty man gold, pretty man key. Wouldn't it be hilarious if I did all of this and it turned out that the Krieger was wetter than the, than the Rhino Walk. <laughs> Towel is absolutely bone dry. And there's no water in there at all. Very impressive for cheap Chinese stuff. Zipper back up. 
right, let's check the Krieger. Uh, there is some stuff in there. There's no water in that either. There is some mud in there, but I think, I don't know whether that's just me putting that in there. Considering what they've just done, that's not bad going. I have to say, these clips feel better. They feel more sturdy on the Kriegers. In general, so far, considering that one's 100 quid and that one's 35, how it will stand up over time, I don't know. Like, if I did this every single day, I'm sure the Krieger would probably last longer. I know there's obviously a level of premium tax with anything that's got a good brand to it. Realistically, that probably cost Krieger, what, 20 quid to make? And that would have maybe cost Rhino Walk maybe, I don't know, tenner to make. Because it's definitely not as nice material. You will obviously pay a lot more for a brand like Lone Rider, like Krieger, like Moscow Motor or anyone like that, because they've got a name for themselves. I love this bike for green aiming. <laughs> you get the front wheel off the floor and everything. It's so much better. Yeah. I love the idea that you can't even see the bike on camera because it's so small. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I can wheelie this thing! <laughs> this bike is so fun! I do need to get some thicker pegs though, some off-roady pegs. What is that? It says 40 mile an hour off-road! <laughs> right, uh, that is full-on abuse, dragged behind a bike at 40 mile an hour off being, after being abused in the water and the ice and the mud. <laughs> oh, I absolutely adore this bike. <laughs> oh, okay. I've got a Krieger up there. Well, that's what they're like. And I've just absolutely abused them going down there. And they're fine. They're still in one piece. A lot of time for that. And that is the first cheap Chinese knockoff. I need to stop saying that because it's... If I read you the address, Hangzong Zibu Technology, Zhangbing Road, Jinshao District, Hangzhou City, what's the Krieger address? Hope you aren't in jeans, is what Joe's just said. Yeah. Yeah, I am, mate. Krieger is based at Unit 5 D side in the UK. So they are a UK company. So uh, I thought they were American, but fair enough. I do need to clean them as well, so I guess I should probably jet wash them, right? Right. <laughs> Let's turn this off. I'm going to turn all my stuff off. I'll get these home and I'll join you when I am at home and I'm just going to give them a clean. Catch you in a bit. Right, Krieger first. I highly recommend not doing this, by the way. One clean Krieger. Rhino walk. This is probably dirtier, to be fair. I haven't done that up, have I? Stupid Sam. That's probably not entirely fair. Right, in fairness to the Rhino walk, I did leave that top bit open. Although it is dripping quite a lot. Krieger's not dripping at all. Let's see how it's looking inside. There's water on the edge. Like I said, I didn't do this top bit up properly. But, that towel is bone dry. Okay, I've just emptied the whole thing out backwards. Yeah, it's definitely not wet. Yeah, no bad. And now Krieger. Again, a little bit of mud around the entrance. But, for the most part, that's dry in there as well. Bone dry towel as well. So in summary, 100 quid. 35 quid. Yes, okay, clips are slightly worse on that. This feels a little bit more premium. Whether the Rhino Walk bag will last the same duration as the Creed, I mean, this Krieger is a couple of years old now as well. So whether it will last the same duration as the Krieger, I don't know. They've both survived being dragged behind my bike at 35, 40 mile an hour, off-road, through puddles, through ice. The Rhino Walk, you can ver see some very light scratches. There's a bit of a ding there. That is bloody good going for a 35 quid bag. 
there's not really any scratches or dings on the Krieger stuff. But, I mean, when are you going to do that? So there you go. Don't say I don't do research for you. Um, <laughs> I'm going to give this thing a quick wash. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in next week's video. Bye.